Ooh. Hi, it's me, Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f And I'm gonna talk to you about this, but this is just like way too early for this. Shit. So I'll be back after my second cup of coffee. All right, here I am, bright eyed and bushy tailed. Welcome to the pajama party. <laughs> collaboration. I am Raina, your friendly neighborhood witch of what the f and I am a lot more awake now. So now I can tell you about this and how I made it. This is a resin piece. It is started on a 24 inch round cradled wood panel and I coated it with a thick layer, probably two layers to be honest, of black gesso. Once that was dry I mixed some titanium white paint with some water and then took a paintbrush and some people use toothbrushes but I didn't have one handy to you know waste on paint. I took one of those kind of tooth fork like paintbrushes, <laughs> dipped it in and then flipped it and you flick it and it sprays all over and this gets you stars, essentially. <laughs> I took a very fine point paintbrush and then just accentuated some of the stars. I knew full well a bunch of these were gonna get covered up by the resin, but it didn't stop me from just like creating a base that looked good on its own. Well, goodish, you know, some of my stars I was a little bit cavalier about and that's okay because they got covered. <laughs> I started by mixing a cup of art resin, which uh, I did off camera because it's mixing resin. It's really not that interesting to watch. One cup is barely enough to cover a piece this size. Once I had the resin mixed, I divided it into a couple of little cups and little uh, reusable silicone cups. And then I added my colors. I used a couple of different colors in each layer. So the first one is comprised of meteorite. This is by this little piggy. And this is a cool color. It's not quite brown or tan and it's not quite gray. It's a nice metallic neutral, but really has an interesting depth to it. So yeah, definitely started with this one. The next color is Supernova by this little pigment as well. This is a color shift that over black will look kind of blue and over white will look kind of pink. I hope I got that right. It might be the other way around, but it's color shift. If you put this over black and white alone, you will get pink and blue and it's really neat. Glisten. This is one of my very favorite interference colors. It's kind of like a blue green, almost turquoise thing when you mix it and put it over black. Uh, it happens to be my favorite because my favorite color in the world is turquoise. Speaking of favorite colors, if you are watching this collab in hopes of winning the contest, my favorite color is like the ultimate turquoise, mermaid. For this layer, I also mixed up some twinkle. This is another interference and this one is blue violet and also just gorgeous. Another one of my favorites because my second favorite color is purple. Turquoise and purple, like my logo. Mm -hmm. To finish off the first layer, I have Armor Art Epoxy Paste. This is pearl, this one is pearl orange, and this one is pearl copper. And I selected these colors because when you look at images from the James Webb telescope, there is a lot of hot pink and oranges in all of the nebulas. Well, not all of them, many of the nebulas. And I love Armor Art Epoxy Paste because this is kind of a special effects paste and allows me to get the really cool lacing. On the base layer of resin, I poured some just plain and then for some of it, about half that was left, I added my most secret weapon. This is kind of new, but it is pinata alcohol ink in opal. This is some amazing stuff. You just add a little bit to your resin, mix it in, and it is bonkers pretty. So that's that first layer. Once the base layer of resin was poured and I had all my colors mixed, I just started adding it, you know, no rhyme, no reason, just trying to get a lot of color everywhere. Once I got that done, tilted a little bit, trying to, you know, get it all spread out. And then I rip out my trusty Dusty, though Dusty is not a good thing for it to be, but my trusty heat gun. I got one from Ace Hardware. It was 
not nearly as expensive as that fancy Wagner that everybody talks about and it works like a champ so I will link that below if you want one of those for yourself. It's pretty great. You turn it on almost the highest setting with the smallest adapter and then it both pops the bubbles and allows you to move the resin. Don't try a hairdryer. Do not. Do not attempt this with a hairdryer. You will be very sorry. Don't do it. Heat gun? Yes. Hair dryer? No. The little black things I'm using to mix and to blend and all of that are Fluid Mixing Sticks by Fluid Art Company. I've got those linked below as well as the silicone mat that I'm doing this all on. Now resin is self-leveling, but you have got to help it a little bit when it's as far from the edges. So I smushed it all around to get everything covered. Now, it's definitely thicker where the colors are, but it really doesn't matter because I knew this was going to be a multi-layer piece and eventually it would all be even, but at least I had to get it all coated. Look at this in the sunlight, isn't it? gorgeous. Now if you've seen me before or you've seen my videos you know that I am one of those people who never stops. It's just never enough, right? Just always got to go over the top. Could that have been my finished piece? Probably, but it's a rather unexciting nebula I think. You know, I wanted something really, something that would make you say wow. So on to round two. So for round two, I started with another full cup of art resin and to the entire thing I added pinata, alcohol ink, and opal. My secret weapon. I should say, I divided it into cups before I added it, but the whole base layer is full of the opal. I've got a couple of different colors this time. This little pigment in Constellation. This is a blue violet or a violet blue, basically purple. That is more on the blue side of things. It is my second favorite color in the whole line behind Mermaid. Those two together are like my ultimate favorite. They're amazing. Oh, and sea glass. You put those three together and whew, outstanding. Anyway, so this color is great. It's another part of the whole, this little piggy goes to outer space line, constellation, galaxy, nebula, meteorite, you know, all that kind of really fun stuff. And then I mixed up some Twilight. Twilight is like one of the very first piggies I ever bought. It's still one of my favorites. It's a really beautiful magenta, sparkly, gorgeous, perfect color. I wish this were cosmetic gray because I would I'd wear this as lipstick. Making a second appearance is Glisten. This time I have some Armor Art Epoxy Paste in Pearl Blue. Uh, these come in a set of six. I'll link that so you can snag it for yourself. Again, this is like special effects stuff and it's amazing. This is also by Armor Art. It is also an epoxy paste. This is just white. This is the thick stuff because they also make one that is thinner. If you want to make resin waves or if you want to have some of the effects that I show you in this piece, you want the thicker stuff because this is what creates the lacing. I'm doing something a little bit different this time where I am doing a uh, layering. I'm layering the resin like one would do with a painting, like a straight pour or a ring pour, where you pour the different colors in layers and then pour it on your substrate. So the basic recipe of the layering I am using is I put Glisten on the bottom and then Twilight and then Constellation and then Armor Art Pearl Blue followed by the Armor Art White. And then I just add it as I saw fit. There was a little leftover in each cup so I scraped that. I hate wasting resin. It's so dang expensive so you know just scrape every last bit out and just show no mercy. I laid it down in a ribbon pour style and then added the remainder of the white. Now the white is the special effect like king. That is the one that creates the most lacing and what you would use again if you were doing like a resin bead. Looking at pictures of outer space you do see a lot of texture and a lot of is it or isn't it and a lot of space, negative space within the colors you know so the lacing was exactly what I wanted. I zhuzhed it around with one of my fluid art mixing sticks and then went at it with the heat gun to spread it out and create that lacing. Now I go over it slowly at first, mostly to pop the bubbles and just to start warming it up. You don't want to just like concentrate the heat gun on one spot because you can scorch your resin and you can start it on fire pretty easily. So, you know, go over, warm it up, you know, get it ready and raring to go. 
And then once it's nice and warm and pliable, that's when you go in and back and forth in a rather concentrated, quick movement, get it to blow out, get the lacing to... That is definitely the scientific term, by the way. Yeah. You can tilt resin. I'm showing you right here. This is a good way to get it spread out and to, to um, get your colors to mix and meld a little bit and interplay and create the composition that you like. Pouring resin is like pouring paint. There's really, you know, no difference um, when it comes to how you're going to manipulate it, be it tilting, I could have spun it. Spinning resin is a little terrifying. I'm gonna have to try that now because I always have to try things that scare me. You can do what you want. You know, you can take a skewer, you can skew it, even though resin will, you know, probably obliterate it. At least you can still create some cool designs or like draw things out in places, scrape and lay down in other places. <laughs> There's no limit, you know, have fun with it. You do have a lot less working time, you know, on average one hour before it really gets thick to the point that you can't do much with it, but as long as you've got the time, keep going until you like it. Now I added a secret weapon here, which is some glitter. You can see it on camera, but I forgot to bring it with me today, so I can't show you here on a close up, but it is like the Createology basic glitter from Michaels in like white iridescent. So when I say this glitter is magic, it really is because where it contacted the resin, it actually spread out and caused even more lacing. So there must be something that is in the coating that is resin repellent, like maybe some sort of oil that creates the iridescence. So it created its own cells, which just made this look wildly cool when it was all cured. Looking at this in the sunlight, this is such a stunner at this point that I was debating heavily just leaving it there but I just didn't think it popped enough. I went and I looked at some images of the telescope pictures and I was like, no, I need pink, I need orange, otherwise this is just not what I am going for. I'm glad I have pictures of what it looked like in the middle because it was gorgeous and don't be mad at me that I went over it, but I'm sorry, I had a thing I was going for and I had to do it, so mm, there artistic license. This time I mixed up two whole cups of art resin. Uh, to the first one I again added my secret weapon and spread it over the whole thing. I wanted negative space, right? I wanted there to be black universe on both sides of the colors and I had kind of obscured the whole one quadrant of it. So part of the resin was mixed into Galaxy. Galaxy is also by this little pigment. It is almost black, incredibly sparkly, very beautiful, and basically the perfect color for a galaxy work of art. To achieve my incredible neon nebula here, I did a little witchcraft. Ha 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 ha. Not really. I mean, mixing potions and getting really cool results out of it is about as far as I go in that realm. It's all a joke, right? Uh, anyway, I started again with Twilight. Uh, this is what I used also in the second layer. And I added to it some Armor Art Epoxy Paste. This is Pearl Pink. Now, the reason I added this to this is because the viscosity of this creates the special effects, the lacing and all of that, but I wanted this color, but it wasn't bright enough. So I decided to add in Hustle. Yes, Hustle. This is from the This Little Piggy uh, Goes to the Disco line. This is an opaque neon pink that ought to be UV responsive. So at the very end of this video, we're going to see if this looks good under a UV light because I have a feeling it will. For my orange, I started with a base of TLP in Mango. Mango is a lovely golden orange color. Uh, it's not too bright, but it's not too deep either, and I didn't want deep, I wanted bright. So this was my base. And like with the pink color, I added some of the Armor Art Epoxy Paste in Orange Pearl for that special effect, uh, layering, lacing, all that sort of thing. And as well, didn't think it was bright enough, so I brought in Boogie. Boogie is like blaze orange. This is also from the This Little Piggy Goes to the Disco line, and it is opaque. It's not sparkly. Neither one of these are sparkly. They are just straight up opaque neon colors that are UV responsive. 
I mixed up one more thing of the Armor Art epoxy paste in white to get some more lacing right on the top because there can never really be enough lacing. I drizzled it on with my mixing sticks, well, the Galaxy, I just poured on, and then manipulating it with the sticks and with the heat gun, and of course with my fingers, I get to the point that I'm feeling pretty happy about it. Yeah, I've covered up the really beautiful second layer mostly, but it's okay, it's art. If you look closely, there are places that it still shows through. This has a ton of depth because there are three layers of resin there, and it really shows and I'm happy with it. Once I got to a place where I was happy with that, I added another layer of the magic glitter and a whole lot of it and then let it cure. Once it was cured, I added more stars, just the same way I did at the very beginning when all I had was just a plain black board. With the tape all around the edges, like the edges were gonna be really sharp, I know, and I could sand, but sanding is like so messy that I needed to seal the whole thing before I, uh... Now, I thought about different ways that I could seal it, and ultimately, I decided to seal it with a thin layer of Tri Art Liquid Glass. Now, this is a pouring medium and finishing resin, different kind of resin. It's, you know, not two-part epoxy, but it's very shiny and it's very durable. It's not self-leveling like resin, so if you want a perfectly smooth surface, this is probably not what you want, but if you don't mind some texture, this is great. However, it was absolutely perfect for sealing because it's much thicker than spray paint or like spray sealer, and it's durable, and I knew that it would look great. So it also creates a little bit of depth since it's nice and thick. I applied this and then let the painting dry for a day or two. Then it was one of my favorite times, get out the random orbital sander. So this is just a random orbital sander. I think I probably had 120 or 150 grit paper on there and then I just took off all of the rough edges. So once that was done, I got it all cleaned up. I got the sides painted again because there was resin that dripped down the sides that I had to, you know, saw off or sand off, excuse me. And then I painted it all again with that same black gesso that I used in the beginning. And then when that was dry, I took some liquid glass and galaxy, <laughs> galaxy, woo, and mixed them together and painted that all around the side so it'd have a nice mica shimmer and, you know, kind of stay true to the whole galaxy theme. Once that was all dry, I poured one final layer of resin. Yes, of course, this is in it. <laughs> and this is how it ended up. I'm really happy with it. I think it is really gorgeous. Um, it really kind of does look like something out of the James Webb telescope, so I'm happy. I hope you enjoy this and that you learn something. Please check out some of my other videos on resin painting. Uh, I'm always using TLP, this little piggy pigments, because they're my favorite. So if you want to see more particularly about TLP and resin, Hi. check out some videos. I do some resin beaches Hi. and some Hello. other things. <laughs> um, even just playing with molds down to like very basic, how do you mix it? You know, I know I glossed right over that in this video, but I do talk about it in other videos if you want to check those out. Take a moment to follow me on social media. Thank you so much, Nathan, for organizing the pajama party and this little piggy for sponsoring it and the 18 artists, well, 17 and me, <laughs> who are all involved in this, uh, teaching you about really cool ways to create fluid art that you may not have seen yet. Next up is the Painted Dreamer, Jodi Flynn. She is amazing, so please go on and check out her video. And if you are watching this after the collaboration, please look in the description box for a link to the playlist of all the videos in the Pajama Party collaboration. Thanks for watching and happy creating.